Hey guys, what's going on? I am back. It has been a week since I was recording any videos. I was sick from Monday through basically yesterday. Uh, it started to taper off around Friday, Saturday. At some point in time, I'm probably going to need to cough or sniffle. I'm going to try to get on mute before I do that because I know nobody wants to hear it. But otherwise, I'm feeling pretty good and I wanted to get back into putting out a video. So we've got Monday's slate here, three game slate. It's not really an interesting uh, setup. Hawks and Celtics, Suns and Nets, Warriors and Heat. Um, if we take a look at the Vegas lines, it's easiest to look at it on uh, Fantasy Lab section for the Vegas ratings. Um, we've got the Warriors with the highest implied total, 121, huge favorites um, against the Heat. And we've got the Suns and Nets in a battle of two awful teams, but great for fantasy purposes in a way. We'll get to that later. Um, the Celtics, eight-point favorites against the Hawks. And then you have the Heat and the Hawks, particularly the Hawks at the, the bottom of this spectrum. Um, they are a team that I'm going to be actively avoiding in any lineups as much as I can. But, um, you know, sometimes you run out of choices when it's only three games. So... First team we're looking at actually is the Hawks. Um, I don't really like using many guys from a team that's going to have such a small implied total. Uh, it doesn't look good. So while some of these indicators here, you know, look like the good parts of a stoplight, I'm not super interested because they're just not really in a good spot. Um, if I scroll over a little bit here. If you need to use anybody from the Hawks, um, you know, John Collins is in a great spot because Muscala is out. It's hard to really use Deadman because he very rarely gets minutes boosts. You know, like I got to 31 here. Don't know why that opened. He got to 31 here, but, you know, he's, he's pretty steady in the 22-23 area. So the upside is just not there. So I can see Collins being worth a flyer. Um, and then you can get to Schroeder if you want. I think that that's not, that's not really the spot that I'm going to go after him. But he's a good play uh, on a team that, you know, he's going to be able to do whatever he wants personally on the floor. Uh, I don't know if the Celtics will let that happen, them being first in defense this year and all. So... If I were using anybody from Atlanta, uh, I would look at the Collins for value because of Muscala being out and then Schroeder if you need to. Um, and this is all on FanDuel, by the way. And if I pop open the, the DK section, still have Boston up. I'd say Collins again. Um, you can make a case for Luke Babbitt, especially on DK at only 3,400. Um, and he's probably worth like a low level punt on FanDuel just because of the three game slate. But DK, especially with, you know, dual eligibility, lots of different options. He could be a, he could be a piece for you where it makes lineup construction a little bit better across the board. Um, just being so cheap and knowing that he's going to get uh, an ass load of minutes, you know, sort of by default. Played 42 minutes in the last one. Um, they're running a short rotation, and if these guys aren't going to be, if they don't have enough bodies, you know, it's just going to be the way that it is. Um, you know, Schroeder again is fine on DK, but I would say that the the spot would probably be Babbitt on DK, and Collins would be my standard guy, but otherwise. Just don't pay attention to the Hawks. With that said, they'll probably beat the Celtics by 30. NBA is weird this year. Top to Boston. I don't really like the minutes trends for Boston. These, you know, high 20s aren't great. <laughs> it makes it a little bit more tough. Um, with that said, I... I have parts of Boston in my lineup right now. Um, not to, uh, spoiler alert, this is my placeholder right now. It will not be my lineup um, when we lock. I've got a lot of salary left, 
but these are the spots that I felt pretty comfortable. I just couldn't seem to figure out, you know, what my next upgrade point was. So I'm hoping that some sort of news comes out that allows me to start some pivots. But right now, I've got Jalen and Horford in my lineup. Um, so obviously, I like those two spots. Um, I don't really like the idea of using Whiteside tonight against the Warriors, and I think Horford's probably the safest bet for me in cash, although I do want to see some news on if his ankle's messed up or not. I doubt that it is anything that I need to worry about, but for right now, I've got Horford locked in on my center spot, and then Jalen Brown just seemed to fit the ranges right now on small forward were kind of weird. If I pop that open here. I have... 1400 extra dollars but everybody is just packed in in this area so the only thing that i'm going to do with jalen brown is bump up to somebody i don't like as much whether it's damari carroll or tj warren who obviously has bigger upside but who the hell knows with him at this point um so right now i've got jalen locked in with durant who we'll get to in a bit but i think a lot of the celtics are in pretty good spots here um, I think Kyrie is a reasonable play. 95 is pretty expensive. He needs to get to 47 to hit 5x. Um, he's steady, and that's all really you can ask for. But I think I see more value at point guard tonight than, than grabbing any of the high end. Um, you know, Tatum's fine. Rogier is fine if you need a punt. 3700 on FanDuel is pretty nice, um, but it's only nice when he's getting the the 23-plus minutes, although <laughs> I say that in, in 18 minutes and 19 minutes he popped what he needed, so, you know, maybe just ignore me, um, but for, he's right there on the precipice of getting enough minutes where that 37 is just outlandish. Um, so it could be a, a good fit for you if you, you know, have a low amount of salary left over on that second shooting guard spot. But ultimately, Celtics are in a good spot. Uh, don't be afraid to use some of these guys. Now, this is going to be the game that has everybody. I could imagine that the ownership rates here, I mean, this is going to be the chalkiest spot. And congratulations if you're the guy that figures out which one of the guys in the muck of these two teams um, hit because it's just a lot of 25 minute a game $4,500 slop so it's a dice roll which sucks because it's such a great game from a Vegas standpoint but right now I'm, I've got a lot of this game uh, I've got Tyler Ulis, uh I've got Russell, I've got Booker uh, I've got Rondé Hollis Jefferson and I've got Bender we can talk about the Suns pieces right now. Um, I liked Euless more than I liked James just because of price. Um, Euless got 28 minutes in the last one, didn't perform. But I like that sort of minutes trend for him. I'm hoping that it continues, but who the hell knows? I mean, these teams are just playing so many guys for so little time. Um, same sort of situation for Bender. I just like him more because of the price. And, you know, needing to get these two guys to 40 total between Ulysses and Bender. I don't... <laughs> like, one of these guys can get 35 and the other could get 5, and it wouldn't exactly shock me. They're, they're not very good. But it's a good spot. Booker... I, I can't imagine not having him tonight. It's just the perfect spot for him. I'm sure he'll lay an egg, but it probably won't matter in a cash game because his ownership is going to be through the roof. Um, I very rarely trust Suns centers, but I think Tyson Chandler is worth a peak. Um, but you're just you're betting on blocks, defensive type stats. It's not like he's going to fill the stat sheet. Um, I don't really have much of a problem with any picks from Phoenix across the board just because it's a crapshoot. Um, 
I like the lower dollar guys for this team because they're getting the minutes. And, I mean, minutes are as valuable as anything else in this game. And by this game, I mean daily fantasy, not this particular game. If you like TJ Warren, go for it. Um, I'm just tired of being on the wrong side of TJ Warren. It's great when you're on the right side. It's awful when you're on the wrong side. And he's one or the other every single time. It's amazing. So load up on Suns. Bounce to Brooklyn. Um, I know Spencer Dinwiddie is looking pretty decent in my projections. I don't love him. Um, like I said, I do have Russell and I do have Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Just both good spots. Hollis Jefferson coming off a 37-minute, 37-point game. Coming off a 31-37-point and 37 point game. He's hot. I, I can't see how the Suns are the type of team that are going to cool him off. So, you know, here comes 10 or something stupid. Um, and then Russell, 8,000 is pretty expensive, but I'll take it. Um, Karis Levert's probably worth a look on DK just from his price. Um, so I would I would probably give that a little bit of a peek. The rest of these guys, if you think that tonight's the Joe Harris night or the Alan Crabb night, or the, you know even the Spencer Dinwiddie night, go for it. Um, these guys are so up and down that it's hard for me to say. That's why I feel pretty comfortable with Russell and with uh, Hollis Jefferson. But yeah, this will be the chalkiest game for sure. Um, although, you know, the Warriors and Heat might have something to say about that. But this feels like the safest bet. There's just a lot of variability in the players themselves. Now, finally, let's take a quick look at Golden State and Miami. I'd love to pull more from this game, but 16-point spread is terrifying. Um, as of right now, I'm assuming that Waiters is out as well, so that's what sort of opens up some stuff for the Heat. Um so right off the bat, I went Durant, um, and it's mostly because of this situation. If I don't take Durant, or if someone's not taking Durant, and I definitely wanted to have some piece of Golden State just because of how much bigger their implied total is. You know, they've got the 121, and they're just a, you know, a little bit over the Suns and Nets game. But, I mean, that's 15 points more than the Celtics and the heat and I mean it's like they get to play an extra quarter compared to the Hawks they're just bad Hawks are just bad so Durant is 4300 more than the next most expensive small forward so if I'm not paying up for Durant there I'm rolling the dice and trying to figure out who of TJ Warren, Damari Carroll Torian Prince, Jalen Brown Josh Richardson, Crab, maybe Iguodala if you want to get into that I'm rolling the dice on those guys to figure out who are the two that are going to hit. I feel a lot more comfortable in just assuming that Durant is going to have a relatively decent game. I, you know, 44 is what my I have him projected at now. Obviously, I want him to go for more than that, but you know, who knows how this game shakes out? All I know is that's not a spot where I want to just start rolling the dice. I'll take the I'll take the guarantee, so to speak, guarantee um, on Durant. It's just not the right setup of small forwards to go any other direction, in my opinion. Um, I took a look at Curry. Now that he's up to 10, that's scary. Um, but look, if you want to roll out something in the Curry, Thompson, Durant, Draymond group, that's I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, like I said, I'm going to rant. I think Draymond's probably worth a good look on DK just because of the you know roster construction. I probably wouldn't touch Clay on DK. Um, 
So I would probably, fo if I were on DK, I would probably focus either Curry, Durant, or Draymond. But Durant for me is the, you know, the hands down, uh, you know, must own. And his ownership, again, will be through the roof. Finally, we'll take a look at the Heat. Now, like I said, I am anticipating Waiters not playing. I think he's home for the birth of his son or daughter, whatever. Who knows? I'm probably getting the pronoun wrong. Um, so he missed the last game. Uh, Wayne got a, a ton of minutes, and I, I've got him at 25 for the night. And then Tyler Johnson ended up getting 33 minutes. I've got him at 28. Um, I love Tyler Johnson for tonight. I think that's a really good spot. Um, especially at 3,900. So you, the only like sort of issue with using the heat is that they have the second lowest implied total. Um, but again, it's a three game slate and they're so much higher than the Hawks. It's better to just ignore the Hawks and treat it like a five team slate. So I think a lot of the guards and wings for Miami are probably in the best spot this is it's not sorted the way that I would want it to be. That looks a little bit better. Um, so, you know, I think Dra like I think Dragic looks okay. I like Tyler Johnson a lot, especially on FanDuel. Um, you know, if you want to play Wayne for min salary, I think that is certainly worth a look. Um, you know, he's going to be bombing, I would imagine. Uh, so I think Wayne looks good on either site. Um, Justice Winslow, I, whatever. As a Duke fan, it's uh, sad that he's not good, but it's not important. Josh Richardson, uh, I think that looks fine. He, you know, he's going to get the minutes. It's all about the return. He'll need 24 on FanDuel to hit 5x. He's had 29, 24, and then he had the stinker there. I think my mouse is double clicking on me. A new mouse. Um, yeah, so I'm good here, I'm good here, I'm good here, I'm good here. Um, they'll probably play a Linux off the floor, so maybe James Johnson can get a little extra run, and then I'm super wary of Whiteside for tonight. Um, it scares me a lot. I know he went pretty ham in his last one, um, but 24 minutes and 25 points, 26 minutes, 34. You need him to hit 43 and a half to hit 5x for tonight. With that, you know, fifth out of sixth implied total, it's the Warriors. I don't know what sort of burn he would get if this gets as out of hand as it's supposed to be. Um, I just, I see a lot of risk there. That He would be a GPP play for me only. Otherwise, I mean, I think you're really rolling the dice. The problem lies in that center is uh, pretty gross. You know, you've got Whiteside and Horford as like the two legitimate people. And then it's the grab bag of Chandler, Deadman, Lynn, Baines, Mozgov. It's none of it's good. Um, Horford is just the most steady to me. I think that Tyson Chandler's ownership will probably be pretty high as the punt center option. And it's possible that I end up there and bump up one of my point guards to get to like Curry or something. But for right now, I feel pretty comfortable um, having two pieces of the Celtics. So again, I can pull this up now. We can take a little bit more of a look. Um, I'll open up the positional stuff. So off the bat, point guards, um, I've got Tyler Ulis and Tyler Johnson. So Team Tyler. At point guard, which is probably the dumbest thing I've ever said. Um, they're just value plays. Uh, I think Tyler Johnson gets a bunch of minutes if Waiters isn't playing. Now keep in mind, if it comes out that Waiters is you know, done hanging out with his new kid and is coming back to play, um, I probably won't be running out Tyler Johnson. 
I don't really know what that pivot would be as of yet, but I assume that Waiters is going to miss another one. Um, so I'm eschewing the top level point guards here. Could come back to bite me. I feel pretty confident in it now. And again, I need to use at least a chunk of this 1400 that I have left remaining. Um, shooting guard, Booker and Russell. Um, I don't really see many options otherwise, unless you know something I don't on Clay tonight. But, I mean, Booker and Russell, top two shooting guards, and they, you know, I know they're going against each other. I don't get the sense that they're going to be going against each other in any of the ways that super matter to me. Um, they don't strike me as the, I don't, I don't get the sense that they're going to be jostling for rebounds. I think they're just going to be bombs away, um, you know, trying to bury threes in each other's faces, which is perfect for fantasy as far as I'm concerned. Small forward, we got Durant, we've got Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown, to me, um, you know, that could really be any insert small forward here. I'd love to be able to pay up and get a $7,100 small forward. It just doesn't exist tonight. So um, right now, Jalen is the best of the worst in terms of everybody in this middle tier. There's no telling. I could end up on TJ Warren. Um, I could end up on Josh Richardson. I could end up, uh, who knows? That's the spot I don't like the most, but I do want to have, you know, I, I like, I don't mind having two pieces of Boston tonight. Then power forward is uh, Hollis Jefferson, which I really like. Um, and then Bender is my crapshoot play. I'm, I'm hoping that he is in a position where, you know, for 3,800, something clicks, knocks down a couple threes, you know, maybe a couple weak side blocks or something crazy and we're getting into value. Um, if you think that's Chris for tonight, I get it. Um, and then Collins is probably like the steadiest player in the center just because of Mascala being out. And then we looked at center before. It's awful. Um, so yeah, that's my placeholder right now. Um, and with this three game slate, you know, their options are pretty limited. So that's it for me. Um, I'd love for you to subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you guys later.